look different with brown platforms. So I'm testing two types of water. Well, close my eyes, you said? What? Close my eyes, you said? You gotta close your eyes. Okay. Okay. This should be exciting. <laughs> the different version between water from the faucet versus Fiji water versus organic water. Yeah, I still can't, like, grasp that my mother's gone. I can't, like, know what I want to comprehend it. It's weird. But tomorrow, me and my grandmother got to do, um... Ready? Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving stuff. And then I have a whole bunch of photos I want to give her and whatever else. Okay. I can't see, so... Alright, you can open your eyes. Okay. Taste the first one. Okay, cup number one. Hmm. Taste the second one. Cup two, okay. That's hard, I can't see. You can't tell the difference? I'm gonna just guess and say cup one is the better water? Or am I wrong? Cup two really? is the better water. What's cup two? Purified. This That's is just good. like this is just like store store bought water. Why can't I taste the difference? That ain't good. Is something wrong with me? <laughs> We're just sticking together. No, drinking. really though. Why can't I taste the difference? <laughs> I don't know. That's not good. <laughs> because I had the Coca Cola. I I don't know if it's that. I can I taste the difference. I can. You know what? My father my father did some shit with me one time and somebody else. He goes, I bet you my father used to do shit like that with me all Funny the time. Video. I said to him, I can't drink that fucking can fucking carnation fucking milk shit. You know the cans of carnation milk, the skim milk? I said, that fucking shit's disgusting. He goes to me, I bet you, you know what? It's mind over matter. He goes, you can't tell the difference. I said, yes, I fucking can. And I said, it's fucking gross. And he goes to me, okay. So he took two cups. I had to close my eyes, did the same thing I just did with you. In I one cup, put regular milk. And another cup, carnation, you know, skim milk and I spit the fucking carnation out, right? So I says, okay, big shot. It's mine over matter. Close your eyes. <laughs> My father closed his eyes. I gave him the milk. I handed him the fucking carnation. He went like this. He goes, all right, you, you win. It is disgusting. <laughs> he couldn't drink it. I said, yeah, but it's mine over matter, right? Then another time, he, we were arguing that I couldn't tell the difference between Coke or Pepsi. And I'm like, yes, I can. There is a difference between Coke and Pepsi. What's the difference? I said, well, yeah, they're both colas, but like Coca-Cola has more of a fizz to it. I think Coca-Cola to me has like a, not tangy, what do you call it? Like more of an acid it's taste? More, it's more seltzer. Yeah, Pepsi's and Pepsi sweeter. And Pepsi's sweeter. Yeah. And like some people go for the... The, the seltzer -y, like, you know, blast of the Coke. I like the sweet. I like the Pepsi better. And my father put two cups in front of me, same thing, and I knew the difference, so he knew not to play my game with me anymore. But we went to a restaurant a couple of years ago, and they put Aquapana on the table, and I drank it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this water tastes is so good. It's so refreshing. I feel like there's no junk in it, you know? And my son says, yeah, well, we're paying, in the restaurant, we were paying like $5 a bottle. You know, you could probably get it in some deli or something for a lot less. But anyway, um, they did pH tests on water. 
bottled water and aquaponic came and is like one of the best. It was like eight point something. And um, Essentia, Essentia, which is the purest one, I think. I've had Fiji water. I think Fiji water is a little fresher. Fiji water is like seven point something. But I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pay so much for fresh water. I'm this sorry. one came out to, it. see what it says here on the side of the bottle? 9.5 pH. So to me, if I'm going to drink water, I want to drink good water. Because that shit coming out of the pipes right now, because I live in New York City, our pipes, our system is so old. So is upstate. There's a lot of bleach upstate. That's why Kansas. they had it on the ballot this year to replace all of that because the water's got to go through all of the pipes I had to stuff. let mine run, and I still, my, like my mother, before she passed away, she was over at my house last month, and she was like, I gave her, um, I had, I mean, I seen the picture, and I, I poured the water from the sink. She was what is that crap? I was like, um, she was, it smells like bleach. I don't want that because she had well water in a, in a trailer. She's used to it. And she says well water is a lot better than, you know, living in an apartment and coming from the sink. I said, I don't like well water. I don't like, I've had it. I don't really? like well water. What's the difference? Um, I know well water, you, like you got sulf, sulfur, is it sulfur? No, not sulfur. It's like egg water, if I'm saying it right. But mm -hmm. she don't have that kind of well water. That has, like, sulfur in it. Mm -hmm. Well water is a lot more, depending on how you clean your well. I guess Bob had to put these, like, drops in every, like, once a year they come and it's expensive. And uh -huh. they clean the well. But having a well and you can't run, like, let's say, you can't constantly flush your toilet bowl a lot. Mm -hmm. So when you're peeing a lot, you pour a little, little bit of, um, not bleach, Yeah, you have to watch with the toilet and paper laundry, and stuff. And, yeah. Well, we draw ours in a garbage pile. We don't like being. We draw the garbage pile out. We right. burn the garbage. Well, they used to burn the garbage. Might as well compost. <laughs> yeah. And then um, they used to do, um, she said that it tastes like bleach. I was like, I don't taste it. She's you're used to it. But I don't like the well water. I've had well water. I don't like it. It tastes very, um. I'm so used to New York water, like. Not fishy pond water. I can't describe the taste of well water. I just don't like it. But it depends on how clean your well is, too. You can right. get dirt in your well. But there there definitely is a difference. And, like, if you go out of state, is it's a big difference. Like, I've been on vacation. I went to Florida, and I didn't care for the water there. I went to Virginia, and they have very soft water. Really? Yeah. Like, here in New York, I think the water's hotter. But, like, when I take a bath or a shower and I use soap, like, I feel like the soap is definitely off of me. But when I went to Virginia, I took a shower and I kept like rinsing and rinsing and rinsing. And I felt like the soap, like the film of soap wasn't coming soap. off of me. I'm like, this is so gross. Yeah, so every state has their own way, I guess, of filtering their water or whatever from the reservoirs or wherever the water comes from. But it's like, hmm. it's different. And I'm used to New York water. And they say that um, even, like, if you go out of the country, like, you can tell the difference between the taste of chocolate, say, in the UK, as opposed to the chocolate here. I've had milk chocolate when I went to the UK. I bought, they had this store, it was called, um, gosh, can I think of it? Oh, they sold m milk smothered milk no chop milk chocolate smothered toffee yeah toffee's chewy toffee yeah there were like these nuggets of choc milk chocolate with toffee inside and thornton's not like thornton here's a who <laughs> oh thorn <laughs> thorn tins um is the name of the store you can find it online they, i don't i don't believe that they ship um, overseas anymore because I oh, used to terrible. buy the chocolate from there and then I'd have it shipped to the United States oh. and it usually cost me more to ship to the United States than it did for the actual product but the chocolate's that good and um, Gabriel's grandmother and grandfather had gone to um, France and Holland yeah what? they went to France they brought back chocolate and he, she said to me do you taste the difference in the chocolate? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, yeah, and you want to know why? I said, why? She said, because the water over there is different. So a lot of, you know, things that have water as a base or whatever or part of the ingredient, 
makes a difference, I guess. Maybe that's why New York pizza is so fucking good. I don't know. <laughs> well, what was it? The, um, where Mash Packs used to be on Fresh Car. What is it called again? Biscago? No. What's the name of it? The pizza where we got the pizza yesterday. I can't pronounce it. Corrado's? Corrado's. Their pizza's good, and they're, like, not because they're Italian, but they make it really fresh. Like, I like their pizza. It's not as good as it used to be. They're new owners. Well, two bros or two boys on the block, their pizza's disgusting. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know what you're I talking like about. It. Um, it's doughy and cheesy. It's more dough and cheese, and, and their sauce is very the one, there, there was There was uh, an Italian family that owned the Corrado's. There's three Corrado's now. There's one all the way down, like, near White Cloth. And then there's one like on one. Myrtle Avenue, like by Fresh Pond and Myrtle. And then there's the one on Fresh Pond by the train station. That one right? I like the best. I feel like their pizza. Because okay, the but that was the original Corrado's. When I was a kid, it, when I was a kid, Corrado's was like the size of my living room, <laughs> which isn't big. My living room's no. only like 10 by size 14, oh, right? But. That's how it was. It was like very, really, really, really small store, and you walked up to the counter, and maybe they had one or two tables in the back. And then eventually, over the years, they like got, you know, they did very well for themselves, and then they opened up the other two stores, and then, you know, they had a bigger piece of property or whatever. But now that family sold the business. And the guy that owns this Muslim guy that bought that business, and I know I went in there, he's like, I only take cash, I don't take credit. Yeah. and um, That's good, though. Whatever, it's your store, that's how you want to do business, right? Like, I'm not going to argue with him, but since they took over, like, the sauce is definitely not the same. And let's face it, with Italian food sauce, it's everything. Um, yesterday we had the pizza. The pizza was good, but we were hungry. Well, but, I didn't try the meatballs, but I'm not, you know. But the I'm pizza, not... the sauce tasted more acidic to me. Like, well, somebody like just really didn't yeah. take the time and, like, balance out yeah. ingredients or really, you know, put much into the sauce. And, like I said, sauce is everything. Whether you're having spaghetti meatballs, uh pizza or, or or you're having um even if you just have like a side order of like mussels like the sauce the sauce <laughs> I hate seafood. if the sauce isn't good none of it's good yeah i don't like seafood i my father liked it i don't like seafood my mom likes seafood i don't like it i, I, I tried lots i puked it up it was disgusting there's a few things i like but not all of it i like uh I like shrimp. It depends on how it's cooked. I like grilled shrimp. My mom used to make it outside in the yard and barbecue. Yeah. I would eat that on a stick. That's the only thing I would eat. Uh, and I and like... And she would bake stuffed clams. Filet of soul. Filet of soul. Um, if I could filter fish, that's good. Or pickled But here. like, I, I won't... I, I, I don't care for salmon. My daughter used to love salmon. Pickled yeah. herring is good. I love pickled but herring. Filet, mm. I like fish if you cook it like where it doesn't taste like fish. And if they the take the filet of sole, I would go and they would like marinate it in something and I'd get um, filet of sole oregano. And sometimes I would order it with like uh, asparagus with a little hollandaise sauce. Huh. And then other times I would get it with a little bit of pasta. They give you like a tiny little bowl of pasta with it. But when I ate the, the, the meat, you know, the fish, when they brought it to me, it didn't taste like fish. It was absolutely delicious because of the seasonings huh. and, and because of the fact that they marinated the fish before they cooked it. Like, if you just take fish and cut it up and, like, you don't marinate it and you don't, it like... It's just, it's just tastes like fucking fish. Like... Well, like, tuna fish, I won't eat it unless I have either mayonnaise in it or some kind of, like, dressing. Like, I mean, I've done blue cheese or creamy Caesar, but I need something in it because of the smell of it. Makes mm -hmm. me, ugh. I know. When I woke up last well, weekend and my son cooked the, I told you when he was here, he cooked the squid. I'm like waking up. It's like, dude, 10, 10 30 in the morning and the whole house reeked of fish. So, you know what that sounds like. <laughs> yeah. I opened up the windows. And woman issues. Like, yeah, bad. seriously bad. 
No but. bob like fish, but my mom made it like two months ago from the whole trailer. The four days stunk like fish, and it reeked like it was disgusting. And she didn't yeah. turn on the fan to let it go up the, the exhaust fan. And we had the windows open for four days, candle wax smell. It still would not leave the trailer. He eats fish like like with the skin, the eyes. But on it's it, really he, good ugh. for you. I don't. Yeah, he likes it. I don't. I hate the smell of it. She don't the, like um, it. The fish oil. Like um, the omega threes, the omega threes that are in it. Yeah. He eats um, it's in a can. What is it called? Sardines. Oh, he. My mother's like, get away from me. Gross. Yeah, I don't know how he. He's eating right out of the can. Ew. 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 That's disgusting. Yeah, I didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't like seafood. Yeah. I wanted to make German quiche for Thanksgiving. I know how to do it, but my grandma's like, we have enough stuff in the oven. You know, the eggs and spinach. And oh, well, you bake it. It's you know easy. what? You spent enough. You guys are going to be eating that stuff for the next couple of days. Just be well, grateful. Just the two of us. Yeah, just be I careful know. that you guys have each other to spend the time Oh, with. trust me. We're still like, I, I slept in this one until about 8.30, which is good for me. Because I've been up early for the past days coming here, blah, blah, blah. And when I go see my boyfriend, the same thing. I get to take the 6 rated bus to go from one town to another and get on another bus. But if she let me sleep in, she was up doing her little thing, having tea, and I slept in. I needed it. I well, that's sweet out. that she does that, because some grandmas aren't like that. They'd be like, you're here, get up. You know? Oh, I'm doing laundry for her Friday or Saturday. I do bed sheets for them, do the ceiling fan I for think her. I'm going to do my bed sheets on Friday, too. And then, um... I got a vacuum for her. I want to. I want the vacuum I got from Walmart. It was like fifty bucks, and it's light, and it picks up everything. I wish I can just take the vacuum and just like get it here for her apartment. It'd be great for her apartment. Mm -hmm. But I told her I think next time I see it for Christmas. I mean, I'm probably buying it more for me than her. But it's bigger and it has the bucket. It's so easy to empty. And with her carpets, she has this little little. She has a floor one. Well, why don't the, you buy the one that you're talking about for I, yourself and then give her your old one? Yeah, it's the same one. I get either one. Either, either, give her mm -hmm. either one, that, that one, or they both work great. And it's a good vacuum. It's only 50 bucks and it's like six pounds. It's so light. This is she not to break her back cleaning her house. Yeah, no. Poor thing. Oh, you know, people don't realize it's it's rough when you get older, you know. And you're, you don't have the energy and, and uh, stamina and the strength that you used to. And, and sometimes yeah. you need help. And just carrying packages up and down stairs when you live in, you know, like she is on, on the I was struggling floor. going up the two flights of stairs. I was like, hey, she goes. Well, I think that's what your uncle, what your uncle does when he takes her out. I hope He so. takes her to the doctor and he, I think she likes going to the supermarket with him because he takes her out of the neighborhood, like more out towards the island near her doctor. And, and then, then complains about gas money. But he must help her carry the packages up. I don't know how he parks in that one street because the bus is going oh, up and I down. Oh, I have no idea. But, you know, I don't even want to talk about him. Yeah, no. Mm. Really, just a waste of air. Mm. <clears throat> his father. Wow. His mother. 18 minutes. That his seem mother like should have swallowed him. <laughs> I just can't wait to sell me and my grandmother. Yeah, yeah, I have you. I'm just not used to it. Oh my gosh, are you cheating this? I told you the whole time I did the water thing. <laughs> and I'm saying, you mother. It's whatever. Your grandmother just swallowed you. <laughs> whatever. You knew I told you do I was going to do a video. Do not show this to her. Do no. not. No, no, no. I oh my gosh. I filmed her on the thing. She thought she was like, God forgive Hi. me. God forgive me. My bad. I am. Yeah, I done messed up. <laughs> Life lesson from my aunt. Live it, lo learn it, and love it, bitch. It's <laughs> just, it's just sad that he is the yeah. way he is. But you know what? Like my old sponsor used to say, he is to be pitied. Mm. So anybody that can just charge their mother, want to charge their mother. Four hundred dollars for even gas and whatever to take her to see her dying daughter. He man. wanted three hundred and something dollars, and I told my mother, I was like, "It cost me less than a hundred dollars for me to go from probably pisses that to the away Brooklyn. on the on at the bar, yeah, you know, yeah, like drinking. Like it's he disgusting. should just take his mother to go see his sister. Or you well, think he'd luckily, want to not that I, not that it's brownie points, but I made my, my mom's 
one of her dying wishes, to see her mother so they could patch things up. And I wasn't there, but they talked, they yelled, they talked, they yelled, and then they cried, and then they hugged each other. I am so glad that you No, it made that. me feel good that, and we had, like I told you, that one good day, Maybe she got up and walked in the yard. Maybe that's why mom got up and walked in the yard that day. She had this, you just saw her. She needed to she, do I that before it. she, she needed to do that before she could leave. Because she laid in bed for like a week and a half, when he, and then she got up and she held on my arm, and she goes, all right, Emma, let's go outside. We sat and yawn. I mean, she did smoke a cigarette. I wasn't thrilled, but yeah. she said, shut up, leave me alone. I'm dying. I was like, Mom, stop saying that. She's like, let me enjoy it. I'm outside with you too. Just let me be. And she goes, oh my God, the sun feels so good because she laid in the yard with her flowers mm. and she made me cry because she's like, look at the flowers and think of me. When you see frogs, think of me. I was like, stop saying that. But now I see frogs, I think of her. I see flowers, I think of her. So... Hopefully next summer I'm going to plant flowers in my apartment window box that we did together. And you made peace with your mom, too, which is yeah, great. If, if, if you guys had she was my big supporter. She was with me when I went down for my had, surgery. She, she had, she, you know, like you guys did a 180 over the years. And no matter what, Bob, as my abuser, you know, I mean, I talk about this on my channel, so I don't care. But, like, he's one of my main abusers. It, it, it. It, um, no matter what he says about me or my mother and lies and twists up to me, I know my mom loved me regardless at the end of the day what my mm -hmm. decision was. And, you know, she counts her blessings like I don't do drugs, I don't drink, and I got mental health issues, but at least I don't do drugs and I don't gamble and spend... I mean, there's listen, other worse things in listen, life, but let me, I count let my me, blessings. Let me say this, like, you know, there's the stigma mm -hmm. about having mental health issues. And it's really, really... I mean, it, it's quite concerning to me in our society, um, you know, people are either very fearful of somebody who has mental health issues or they just like, they just think, okay, they're cr like, they, they're crazy, you know, but having a mental health issue doesn't make a person insane. Some people have mental health issues because they've been so strong for so long. And gone through a lot of trauma. And we need to have compassion for people that are struggling. Um, you know, people that struggle with depression, or anxiety disorders. Um, or the social identity or anorexia or, or, or any, bipolar, any, anything. Anything like that, you know. Like, just have compassion for people. Like, just be grateful that's not happening to you. And, you know, don't think that you're better than somebody else because you don't have that issue or whatever like or don't you know think that that person can just snap out of it like they're going through depression you know say well you know what's going to take to be happy then you know that person can't even answer that when they're going through a depression they're real it's it's a it's a real it's a real internal battle I know, and I struggle with it. It's not something that that That's person like or yeah. even doctors, I don't think, can explain. It's just almost a phenomenon that happens. And, yeah, you know, just be compassionate. Unless, no, I can't. unless that person is coming at you with an axe or a, a knife or something like that. Well, then, you know, run. No, I, mean, I have my blessings. Like, I'm grateful to God. Mm -hmm. I don't have an addiction. Like, for example, to get up and have a cigarette. I would hate to have that addiction. Or to get up and have alcohol. Or to get up and I got to gamble. Like, maybe I have a shopping addiction. Or well, I kind of do have a shopping addiction. But I count my blessings. Like, I have mental health issues. But at least I don't have that. Not that mine's any better. But I'm grateful for what I have. You know, it's a mental health issue. You know what? I wouldn't want to get up and struggle like that. That's the horrible. thing, the thing is, you can have an internal struggle, and totally have your shit together. Hmm. You know, because there are people like yourself, like you know, you pay your bills on time, you take care of your responsibilities, all right. And then there are people who don't do those things, and they don't have any mental health issues. Yeah. That's true. Okay, yeah. so you know. With you, I have to say, the most important thing is that you were there for your mom. Yeah. When she was facing her darkest, you know, time with the cancer and breaking her hip and all of that. Like, you were just there for her every single day. And I think that's the biggest thing that people need when they're going through something like that. It, forget about the medicine, the pain medicine. Yeah, totally. But, like, just knowing that somebody's sitting beside you and 
even if it is at the hour of your death, just knowing that there's a loved one there with you, you know, just helping you make that transition and you're not alone. I feel bad for people that are alone when they die, you know, but that's, a, it's a really big thing to be able to do what you did, you know, to just look after her when she was, and, you know, clean well, off and all that stuff. It was a year and a half of, you know, I went with her before she got sick. Excuse she lost me. her hair, her hair grew back in. She had the shade on, she had the, 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 the on, and then she, her hair grew back in. It, I was with her for the last two weeks, and then I, I didn't know she fell because Bob never told me, or my aunt didn't even tell me. And I didn't know that she broke her hair. So if I knew that, I would have been there sooner. But I was there after she fell, and I was there after she got worse, and I was with her the day before she passed away. And as much as it kills me to say this, which I know you'll like stop saying it, but I don't regret letting her go in peace and saying it. But I guess I, I wish I didn't, but. Like, I had that video I showed you watching her lay there, comatose, just not moving. It's not easy. No, but it's like, <coughs> I could watch the video, but you know, it's morbid and gothic, but at least I had that to watch. Excuse me, I need a cough yeah. drop. No. So. Well, you know what? At least I let her go, and I, I, I whatever I said to her, she was fine. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's not for anybody to pass judgment. Like, if you did that, like, whatever, you know? Mm. No, but I'm saying, like, it feels good that I let her... Like, whatever I said to her... You okay? No, Wait. I can't deal with this anymore. Whatever I said to her, she felt some kind, I hope. And I'm just scared. I, I mean, I don't know anything. She did hit, hit, her, hit her hand when she fell, but I wasn't there. And, like, my Aunt Hope said, which I thought was stupid. Well, what does it matter now? Because she's dying of cancer. I'm like, because that could have maybe made her... I think when she was She was conscious. definitely in a lot more pain... Yeah, and if she, I, my opinion, even if she is dying of cancer, I think you should have gave her a CAT scan, but she was at the last rigs of her death, unfortunately. But still, if she hit her head, she's got to have some kind of, uh, she was not co-conscious, co, co, co can't, I can't Concussion? Say, I think she had a concussion, maybe that's why she wasn't talking and moving. She was just laying it's there. You've you seen the video. But like. But unless it was the morphine doing it. And, and, and that's the thing with doing hospice at home. Hmm. Well, she you know, wanted to be at home. She did. She wanted to be at home, but it's hard on your loved ones. And when you don't have a nurse that's there, the nurse came every other day. The RN. Yeah, but so. they what they say an hour. Yeah, yeah. But this is what I'm seeing. Like, if, so if they're in the hospital, they're being monitored around the clock. So that more than likely wouldn't have happened because there's somebody constantly checking on her. Um. Yeah. But, uh, like, when my dad had a stroke, he had two, one right after the other. Oy. And my father was very weak, virile. He lost a lot of weight. And he didn't remember our names. And Aww. I wasn't sure if he even knew who we were when we walked in the door. And just seeing my dad like that just really broke my heart. But he wasn't allowed to get out of the bed. And he kept trying to get out of the bed. And while we were there, we just kept telling him, Dad, stop, get back in bed, you know. But if we weren't there, the orderlies were there, the nurses were there, you know. <clears throat> but when you hospice at home, so many things can go wrong if you don't have a nurse. Yeah. That's there to watch you around the clock. Or family members taking turns, you know. Well, sometimes family members will do that. Okay, I'll do day shift, you do night shift, you know, and we have different sleep schedules, so somebody's constantly there with her. Because apparently she thought she was okay enough to get up yeah, and I don't go know how she brush her teeth. Up. Well, no, the first time she fell, I didn't know, it was like a week and a half before she passed away, she was in the bathroom brushing her teeth and she lost balance. And Bob mm -hmm. was in the bedroom, which is her husband. I didn't know that... Uh, he just heard her moaning because she couldn't talk because of the, the lung cancer. She was going, you know, and she couldn't talk. And he found her and, and called hospice and the ambulance because if, you know, he moves her, he might hurt her more. So he, right. he was, you know, and she's like kind of flopping around. He said the second time she fell, um, she, 
I, I don't know where she broke her hip, but that's how she broke her hip the first time. The second time is when she had the broken hip laying in bed, mind you, with the catheter in her. And she rolled out of bed, and, it, you know, I showed you the video. She's got that table next to her. So I don't know if that's when she hit her head or not. I don't you know because I wasn't there. That, the video that you showed me of your mom laying there... Was that the video you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. yeah. That was before it's she... It's like she was partially gone That's already. after she broke her hip. Yeah, that was after laying there like that. that was yeah, after but she broke that's her a lot. That has a lot to do with the morphine that she was on. Too. I just hope she heard me. I don't know. I'm just... A lot I'm of sure things in my did. head thinking. I'm sure she heard you, but she probably couldn't respond back because she I, was so doped up. It just, I don't know how people can't respond. It just kind of... Because like, of the pain that she was in, I mean, that was the most humane, that's the most humane thing you can do for somebody, right? Yeah. The morphine takes away the pain. So it numbs everything, like, besides your heart muscles? Like, it just... You just... Sleep 24-7? Comfortably, you comfortably numb. That's really horrible. I mean, it's good, but, like, it sounds horrible. Like, you have no emotion. You just, basically, like a vegetable, right? You just lay there. Well, mm. in your mother's case, that was, that was the most thing. humane thing to do. Otherwise, she would have been in agony. Yeah. <clears throat> and this, this little thing that I think of her. Just... Like I said, when you lose a parent, that is one of the hardest things in the world. And I'm young and I lost her. That you will ever go through. I think at any age, but even being young, like under 35 and young... Is mm -hmm. bad, or you know, I know people lost them at 14, 45, 50. I think no matter what your age is, but it's always hard, yeah. yeah. So, but it, it, it's it's just hard, you know, and it's one of the hardest things you'll ever go through. And having been through it apparently with both of my parents, the only thing that I can tell you is that when it first happens. The pain, like my mom, my mom, I lost my mom, the pain. I don't want to say it was unbearable, like, it feels like it's unbearable because it hurts so much. But if you are a person of faith, then it makes it. You know, that gives you the faith to believe that there is an afterlife. Oh, I believe there is. I definitely believe in, like, spirits and God. And <clears throat> I do. I, I just, I mean, that's why I do my little magic thing. And I still want I still feel like she's with me in my house. But like, the only thing I remember when my mom died is, like, we did the whole going to the funeral parlor. Everybody came in. And you're busy. You're busy with the funeral. You're busy the day of the burial. You have people around you. And then all of a sudden, it's like, it's quiet. Everybody goes home. You know? And that person's body is in the ground. And yeah, I, I came that. home and morbid. my kids went away for the weekend. You know, they went by daddy, right? And I just remember feeling like I was sitting here and the walls were closing in on me. And I got up and I grabbed my car keys and I'm like, I have to get out of here. And I got in my car and I started driving. I had no idea where I was going. I just couldn't sit in the house. I didn't, like, didn't want to be in my head. But I couldn't help not being in my head at the same time, you know. Oh my God. And I'm like sitting in my car at a red light. And... It was like the whole world around me was moving like in fast forward mode. You know, when you fast forward your TV, that's what like it looked like. Everybody's crossing the street. Who's going to the butcher? Who's going to get their hair done? Who's going to get their nails done? Who's going over to their friend's house? And it was like I was just sitting back and watching it. And I felt completely detached from it. Like uh, it wasn't even real. Like I, some, because I felt like something inside of me died. Like I was just a spectator of the world. Like and, you feel spaced out. That's yeah. yeah. And, you know, I was very numb and just thinking like, look at all these people wanting to do all this stuff that they think is so important. But it's and really none not of it important. is really important because that day. Uh, you know, when you lose somebody you love, like, things really come in 
things really come into perspective for you about life and, and just how it can end like that and yeah. how we should appreciate the people that we love while we have them. We don't even if you have issues, like I tell people, so, like um, make up. Like even if you have to be the bigger, or better person, no pun intended, but Absolutely. like make amends and just at least you can say if that. Like for example, like I tried making amends with my abuser, which is my mom's husband. I did on the phone. He cursed me out. They don't care about what my mom thinks what I think. I made the amends. I tried. He didn't want to do it. So I then you have go. to let it go. And I did. But it, my, it hurts. But my kids. It. I always say to my my adult kids when. It, when we get off the phone or we text, they say, I love you. And I say, I love you more. And I explained to them both recently, like, when I say, I love you more, I'm not saying that I love you more than you love me. I'm saying I love you more than anything that could happen between us. We're going to have times where we don't agree. We're going to have times where maybe... You know, you're an asshole and I get mad at you or maybe I'm an asshole and you get mad at me because we're imperfect people. But I love you more than whatever is happening between us. If you get sick, I'm going to be there, you know. It, but, but then there also has to be like the relationship dynamics, I think, change between a mother and a child as the child gets older. You know, a child is very dependent on his parent to primarily do most things for them, right? But when a child gets older, I think the dynamics change where you become more interdependent. Like, your parent shouldn't be dependent on you and your, you shouldn't be dependent on your parent. But don't tell each other how that person should be there for you. Allow that person the freedom to be there for you in a way that they're comfortable with. You know, and that goes both ways. You know, uh, I, 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 if my children come to see me, I want them to come to see me because they want to come see me, not because they feel obligated to or because they feel guilty if they don't. You know, like, they're not coming this Thanksgiving, I'm not going to see either one of them. But I'm not mad or, or upset with either one of them at all. You know, there's just stuff going on. And they made their choices. And I love them more. I love them more than whatever is happening right now. I could, what do I mean? Do you sit here and cry about it and not love them as much, you know? Um, and there are times I have decisions that I have to make where they're concerned. Where me giving them something may not be for their their highest good because it's not helping it's enabling you know so um that's part of kind of the dynamics that i'm talking about or like being able to say hey you know um i can help you but only like i can only give this much time or this much money or whatever whatever you know, I mean, like, your parents are going to get older, they're on a fixed income, like, you're not going to yeah. go and borrow thousands of dollars from them, right? But, nope. but I think just accepting, being more accepting of others, and just letting people be who they are instead of expecting people to be a certain way, that's not really loving, that's not really kind at all, that's just kind of like trying to mold people into an image of you know yourself or how you want them yeah. to be and you can't love people it how can you if you just constantly expect them to be this way instead of that way that they are right you can compromise i think but you still gotta love them for who they are exactly exactly and 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 sometimes it's very challenging to do that you know especially when i got fault defaults or falses or yeah. past trauma and abuse, whatever. But, it, you know, it's challenging, but it's 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 a good challenging, I think, because your love for that other person deepens, and you learn that you have to apply that same principle to, to everybody in the world. You can only extend yourself to others as much as you can, you know, and if you overextend yourself, you know, who should you be mad at? But yourself, right? 
You know, if I say, oh, I'm exhausted and I'm overwhelmed because I overextended myself. The person I'm really angry with is myself and the situation that I now find myself in. You know, it's really, really not the other person's fault. You know, so, and unfortunately, this wisdom that I have today only came as a result of all the things that I've gone through in life. I wish I had this wisdom when I was in my 20s, you know. Okay, my life yeah. probably would look very different than it does now, but uh, that's life, you oh, know. Because they count your blessings. Yeah. Anyway, I love talking with you. We always have Me like too. these great conversations. I like I can like look back and watch on a video and also help other people who watch my channel too, which I like, you know. But it's also like a, a like a video diary, which I love. One thing about technology, I guess it's good. You can look back and have memories, you know. You know what's awesome? I <laughs> think one of the first times, like when you were transitioning, I love the fact that I could talk to you and you really understood both sides of the situation, you know? Like, if I told you, oh, well, I'm going through this with this person that I'm dating, you know, this guy that I'm dating or whatever, you understood both sides of it. And, yeah, I know how that feels because men are more visual or whatever and women are more, like, about our feelings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the way that we feel attracted to our partners comes from a totally different place. And, you know, to kind of get us in the mood is different. And, like, the fact that you understood that just totally blew me away. And the more that you were getting, you know, going through the transition, you are getting the, the shots and going through the hormonal, you know, changes. Like, it's like, yeah, you know, like, men have this testosterone that kind of make them... Who they are. They're just, like, much. out there, like, physically, like, like, almost like they're predators on the hunt, right? Like, and for women, it's so different because we need to feel that connection and that bond and that safety with that person and know that they really well, it's like genuinely being intimate care with, me, like, with women, I think we're, like, for me, like, being intimate, it's more mental than physical. And for men, I think it's more physical than mental. It's yeah, like and that's why when they say "honey," it was nothing. I'm like, like, I believe, what? I believe them, but <laughs> at the same time, it's like, who wants your boyfriend or husband sleeping with somebody else? But yeah, like honestly, uh, I don't want to have to deal with that anymore. But if you have that urge, that's what your girlfriend or your spouse for, is for. Yeah. Your your other half is for. Um, what is this like, uh, Baskin and Robbins, like thirty something flavors? Like oh, you gotta geez. try them all. Like, come on. I think it's a man thing. I think that's what they want. Like, not to bring up like FLDS Mormons, but same thing with them. No, let's Having talk, let's talk about commit and... commitment. It has to do. Oh, I mean, it, they have like twenty wives and it's well, still they committed to each one of them. That's yeah. different. But like, I mean, each one's different. Normally, like a man in the world that's not part of uh, a, a, a some cult or culture wow. like that like they're going to um you know they're gonna like verbally make you feel like they are making commitment to you but are they really committed to you because how many women get cheated on you know for whatever reason and sometimes women don't see it. A lot of women don't see it coming. And they hide it well, but women do it to men too. And they get sides. they get the heart broken. I just think it's horrible. Like honestly, I don't. I think that people just need to be honest. Like I'm not ready to be in 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 a monogamous relationship. It's okay if you can't be monogamous. Mm -hmm. Like if that's where you're at, that's where you're at. No judgment. You know, like I am Christian. I'm not perfect. I apparently. Talk like a truck driver sometimes, but yeah, I talk like you that. know, <laughs> sinner saved yeah, by it. grace, always a work in progress. But you know, I, 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 I just don't see telling somebody I love you, and you know, being with that person intimately, and then being with somebody else, it's really not fair. Then don't say it. You know, mm -hmm. just be honest and say, listen, I'm not looking for that kind of relationship. And if the other person can accept it, you know, like everything out on the table, everything has to be on the table. And if it's not, then it's really not an honest 
relationship and honesty is the like the most important thing in a relationship. A lot of people with don't anybody. think that anymore. It's all about physical money and what they can get out of the person now. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah it's sick. so different today. Especially in my generation. It's all they care about. I feel sorry how much for you money is, yeah. I'm no I'm more traditional, which you know, I'm more old school. Like I'd rather be even if I can't children, cook, clean, be the housewife, the man works, I'm old school. Women want to work, that's your choice, but I'm just more traditional. But the women today, like, I have friends who are feminists, and they brag about not cooking. They brag about being locked up, and the men do it too. And it's like, why do you, oh, I have five different baby mamas or three different baby daddies. Why do you want to brag about that? I would just because shut up. Because people are so promiscuous. It's that's disgusting. why, you know. There's something to brag about. And I think that you can't that keep a relationship going? I, I don't know. I was listening to this um, pastor the other night, and he was talking about, you know, like filling the hole in your soul. And for a long time, I had that. You know, I walked around and lived a large part of my life like that. And people look to fill that with whatever, material things. You know, the car they drive, all the next, the next, high, it's like chasing the next high. Oh, when I get that, I'll be happy. Yeah. If I get that person and get into a relationship, I'll be happy. If I buy that house, I'll be happy. No. You know, it's like King Solomon, right? The wisdom that came to King Solomon was that there was nothing in the world, in the world, that was going to make him truly happy. Happiness is something that we have inside or we don't. And to me, for me anyway, that is largely based on my relationship with my creator. And having a connection, like as they say in, in the rooms, you know, any 12-step program, you know, um, having that connection with your higher power. Uh, what is the 11-step? Sought through prayer, make, uh, meditation to make conscious contact. You know, and if I'm walking around each day and I'm tr trusting God and I'm living in the moment, you know, I see so many blessings. I, I, I experience God in my life. But if I'm not living my life like that, I'm looking for things out there, whether it's retail therapy or, you know, relationship therapy or whatever. None of those things are going to make you happy. You've got to have a relationship with God, not not a religion, just an honest to goodness, real, pure hearted hunger to know whether there really is or isn't a God, you know, and then finding out for yourself and having this wonderful experience like, hey, I experienced something that I cannot put into words and I know that that's God and it's God for you, you know what I mean? And when you have that, and when you live by the principles that God set out for us, you know, people are like, oh, God gave us commandments. It's kind of like you're a teenager in Christ or a Jew in Christ, uh, uh, you know, a Jew when it comes to the commandments. You're, you're still a teenager because you're kicking and screaming about keeping these commandments. Why is he pulling all these restrictions? Ah, my parents suck. You know what I mean? When you grow up, with God and you mature, you realize that God is only asking you or uh, suggesting that you do these things or commanding that you do these things because they're to protect you. And to save your soul. Well, well to you save your it. soul, but to keep you from going through all that. Turmoil. A lot of turmoil, a lot of heartache and stuff that you just don't need to go through, you know. And when you find peace in that, I really truly believe this and you, you know... And especially if you're a person who has a lot of trauma and you work on yourself and trying to heal the trauma of the past and you start to become whole. And there's a big, big need in our society today to be whole, you know, um, when you have that, you're not really looking anymore. You're just enjoying your life. And when you're whole, you enjoy whatever, you know, you don't consciously go out there looking for somebody you trust god you go about your life and the things that you need will be provided for you and however your life turns out just be be content be grateful for what you have because there's so many people out there that, that are wish, worse than you that worse off or wish they had what you have you know so it's just really i don't know it, it, maybe maybe people think i'm simple or stupid for 
thinking that way. Oh, I think or... the same way. Like I said, I count my blessings. <clears throat> I got my, my, my housing program. I don't, you know, smoke or drink, thank goodness. I have other issues with myself, like mental health, or but I'm lucky it could be worse. Like, right. And I'm not judging someone who smokes cigarettes or drink every day who choose to be homeless. I feel bad for that person, but they choose when they don't want to get the help, like rehab or programs. But I'm grateful that I'm not that situ scenario. Right, right. You know? I'm grateful that I, I don't have that, you know. I have other issues, but I'd rather have what I have than add more to the plate. <laughs> Well, you know. do you honestly think anybody's going to listen to all this? <laughs> <laughs> all my subscribers. Well, love me. I hope something helped. Yeah. And I hope everybody has a very happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. And if you like this, thumbs up the video. It always helps me out. And uh, more content like this, if you like, you know, comments down below. Hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. And uh, be safe, be true. Don't be blue. <laughs> Let me say that. Uh, a little rhyme. And remember, happiness is an inside job. Yeah. It's on the outside interior. <laughs> Bye.